welcome to our first ever Tea from 22 video from The Spectator, where we will interview a fascinating Westminster figure every week. I'm Isabel Hardman and I edit the Coffee House blog, and today I'm joined by Margot James, rising Tory star, PPS to Lord Green, and member of the Number 10 Policy Board. So, Margot, the Number 10 Policy Board is quite a mysterious entity at the moment, and I wondered if you could tell us a little bit about how it works, how often you meet. Yes, we meet about once a month and periodically we'll meet with the Prime Minister and we basically go through very, very top line a series of policy proposals that each of us have either developed ourselves or have um, had proposed to us by other Conservative MPs. And we probably present these ideas in about two minutes. Oh, wow. Uh, yes, it's got to be very top line. And how many policies are there that are in the pipeline that is being really considered seriously? Because I think the board's only had one policy that's actually made it into the public domain so far. That's right. Wow, that's interesting you disagree? that you should say that, <laughs> Isabel. Where did you get, uh, source that information well, from? Well, the impression I get is that there's only been one announcement on the private rented sector that was a policy board oh, announcement. Oh, yes. But, it, okay. but that was trailed as a policy board announcement yes, as well. Yes, that's true too. Yes, that, that was a policy board idea. And there has been another one as well. Have you got any particular ideas that you want to I've to got... Pitch? Um, th th Actually, this time, um, my, I worked on an idea with Jesse Norman um, on uh, the old area of town centre um, development and you know, improvement. And you've mentioned Jesse Norman a couple of times. Obviously, he's left the policy board now. One of the things that has been going around Westminster as a rumour is that the policy group, and I know it's changed since the reshuffle, hasn't been getting on that well. There hasn't really been a sense that the members have gelled that well. Would you... So oh, I completely fair. disagree with that. No, and I haven't even heard that rumour, actually. No, I, I certainly don't agree with that. In no. fact, there's been quite a momentum, and um, the last few board meetings have been, you know, we're all been quite galvanised. Do you feel able to disagree with one another? Because obviously you're, you're yes. all from different parts of the party, aren't you? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Well, exactly. And some t I've, I, we certainly do, yes. Yeah. Has it ever got heated? Not in a disagreeable sense. No. Um, I mean, I put an idea forward at the last meeting and one of my colleagues just said, look, I think that's a really good idea, but I think it's really bad politics. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so you're able to be honest yeah, with one another. Yeah, definitely. Margot, there was a point where you resigned from the Conservative Party back in the day. I wonder whether you could tell us a little bit about that. What, why did you feel the need to leave and when? I left the day after Mrs Thatcher was forced out as as Prime Minister. Why was that? I was so angry about the um, her removal. I was I'm still I can I still feel the anger now 20 years later. Uh, I felt it was uh, an absolute act of um, treachery and disloyalty. One thing that you've been a real cheerleader for is, is the modernisation project of the Conservative Party. You earned a huge amount of praise for your contributions to the gay marriage debate, for instance. And I was interested in how successful you think modernisation has been, how much more needs to be done. I think quite a lot more needs to be done, actually. I think it's very much um, a job half done at the moment. Do you think the, the gay marriage law, obviously it's... It's now an act, but the way the debate was conducted in the party, do you think that has benefited the party's image or damaged it? I think that what people are left with is that it is a Conservative-led government and a Conservative Prime Minister that has got gay marriage on the statute book. What about some of the contributions of some of your <laughs> colleagues? Um, when we were at the second reading, I did get quite incensed with some of my colleagues who were sort of barracking the Secretary of State who was trying to make the, you know, the opening speech and I thought that was a bit much and it did get me angry which is why I spoke quite passionately when, my, <laughs> when, when I was came. finally called. Uh, but on, on the whole I think the debate was carried out in quite a good spirit in Parliament. Sadly that can't be you know, said of some of the rest of the country where some of the evangelical groups um, deliberately misled the public to believe that we were trying to force gay marriages in churches, which or mosques or synagogues, which we were never doing, and they knew that all along. Uh, so I think it was really appalling the way they behaved. So it was a wider attempt to sow confusion. As much yes, as I think else. so. But I think in okay. Parliament it was it was okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much, Margot, for talking to us on our first ever Tea from Twenty Two film. We'll be back to talk to another fascinating guest from Westminster. So do join us then.